Welcome back, Zero K fans. To now, Liza Don, our man, your host, Dominic Rashad Fury, and this replay is going to be between Frenzy Mode and Bum Crumbs on Otago. It's a request from Frenzy Mode. I was chatting in the last game I cast, which I guess YouTube would be the last one you just watched, that I was talking to them about, like, hey, this is how I do replays, this is how I choose what I cast, and so, you know, if I have a request, just, just let me know, just throw it my way, and I will do it. And they immediately did. So, here we go. Frenzy mode, going for the spider factory. On the other hand, we have the amp bot factory coming from Bump Crumbs, which on a map this large is a curious choice, but it is it's a large but flat map, so it's a little bit deceiving that way. So yeah, don't don't take the fact that it's large to be the, the be all end all of how it's played. It, however, is a bit of a flatter map, which doesn't mean vehicles would be a good idea, but hey, eh, spider versus amphib, that's gonna be an interesting matchup, to say the least. Also, the use of wind. I like that. That's 1.0. Not a bad setup. I mean, if as I said before, and I say often, if you can build wind, build wind. If you can build wind on a hill and get something above 0.5, it's worth it. Like, it's more worth it than solar. And here, it's like you can build wind all over this mountain. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised they aren't just going ham on this. Where is it? There we go. Yeah, just alt-shift wind. Alt-shift wind on the entire mountain. Loads of room for energy. The frenzy mode is going to be fine for energy. Bump crumbs... They're going to have a harder time doing the same thing because they don't have the all-terrain nature. Like, it's not there. Like They can kind of do that. Red does mean pathable, so they could send conches up there and start building up some wind generators, but they're not going for that. They're going for solars. Easier to defend, but harder to set up. Also, considering the fleas... Oh, no, they don't know. They don't know that. Bumpcrumbs doesn't know that Frenzy Mode's gone for spiders. That's actually unknown at this point, but it will be maybe soon known, depending on whether or not this fleas hold fire. Hold position, not hold fire. That... Ooh, that's a good question. No, the duck does not get shot. Get spotted, for sure. Does not get shot. So considering that, it looks like overall Frenzy Mode is going to be pretty well fine. Like, Frenzy Mode should be able to just build up their economy. Not a whole lot of defenses, though, so there are, there are ways that this duck could get in and start really wreaking havoc. Commander as well, unupgraded, which may be okay. Against one duck should be fine. But mainly, Bump Crumb's not even going for much in the way of any major economy. They're, sorry, no, any major economy. They are going for economy. They're not going for any major military. That's what I meant to say. They're almost entirely going for economy. So at this point, they're clearly taking advantage of the size of the map. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. So people, so I was kind of demonstrating it offhand. But so if you hold shift, you get a line. If you hold alt shift, you get a box. If you hold control, if you hold control shift, you just get an axis aligned line. If you control alt shift, you get a hollow box. Which isn't that it kind of it's kind of useful if you're dealing, say if you wanted to build wind generators around a solar plant, you didn't want them to be right next to it. You will control alt and do that. I mean, normally with wind generators, you just go alt shift with with whatever, and alt shift around an not with geo plant. Alt shift around an control shift, sorry. Control shift around an object, like on its own, it's just access line line. On top of something else, it's a build around it. Which is pretty cool. But with wind generators, building around it is a bad idea because you end up with the wind generators. It's you end up the wind generators immediately adjacent. And that's a great way to lose your wind generators because of their explosion radius. <laughs> wind generators blow up. They don't deal enough damage to kill each other, but a couple of them get damaged and it becomes a big chain reaction of explosions. You lose your entire wind farm. Like, this is fine, more or less. They're on the edge of damage, so they will get damage if one of them goes down, but it's not as big of a deal. Also, Frenzy Mode could really use more Caretakers. They got the Weavers, which is good. That's 15 metal, 25 metal total, but it's at the very edge of production. They're, they're metal... I think 25 metal income, 21 energy income is a bit of a problem there, too. Should be okay in a sec if they build a bit more energy, but yeah, that's the one thing. They, they had the right idea, though. I like the use of the wind generators in the hill, and any of these hills would be fine. Like... If they built wind gens anywhere, it'd be basically paying for itself. At the same time, though, the fleas coming in the forward, like, Bum Crumbs, they're not, I'm not sure they're really worried about this. There are a lot of fleas, but fleas don't last very long. So if there's undefended areas of the base they could go for, sure. But there aren't really any undefended areas. Everywhere has a lotus. I think a dozen fleas is enough to take out a lotus and kind of break even. But I'm not entirely sure. Experimentally, like, DPS 7.1 DPS, so it's like, they kill two fleas per second. 
The flea deals 10 points or 45 damage per second. 75. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, 15, 16 fleas, I think, is the minimum for a lotus. Yeah, you gotta consider the lotus is damaging them along the way. So, a bunch of them have to be buffer anyway. And two of them die per second. So yeah, I think 15, 16 would be enough. At the same time, though, what's more important is the amount of visibility Frenzy Mode gets from this. They have they have entirely perfect knowledge of what their opponent's up to in the front lines. Of course, the problem is they don't have a whole lot of frontline forces to actually deal with that knowledge and make use of it, so a bit of a shame. But they are going for a lot of Hermits, which is good. Actually, Hermit Reckless is not a bad mix. It's a slightly unusual mix, no Venoms or anything, but... I don't disagree. I think I think it makes sense considering they're going against some heavier forces off the Antbot factory. <laughs> Hermit Reckless makes sense. Hermit is the frontline tank. Reckless is the artillery that goes in the back and deals extra damage. I mean, there's not really a lot of raider forces, so Redback wouldn't really make sense. And even against Antbot in general, I mean, what do they have for raiders? The ducks? Eh, Redbacks don't work especially well against those. So, yeah. And Venoms I could see working okay if you had half a dozen of them. But no, Hermits, I like. I like this approach. And Bumcrum's going for Boy Scallop, which is even ju which is justifying Frenzy Mode's approach even further. The only thing is, again, both players are accessing. Fren Bumcrum's going for the Caretaker. Frenzy Mode already had the Weavers, but moving one of them away to start building up more power. A good idea. Better executed a couple minutes ago, but not a bad idea. Especially the wind gens at the top. Really, I'd focus on the wind gens, but that's more of a map-specific thing. Like, wind generators are great, if the minimum value of wind generator is high enough that it works. But again, that's like on the hills, great. 0.5, totally worth it. 0 0.0, no, not worth it at all. But yeah, 0.5 or better, go for it. Like 0.5 or better, it's about even with solar collectors when you like on average for cost. Anything better than 0.5, it's more, it's more worth it for cost than a solar collector. One or better, it's never worse than a solar collector. It's not even on average better, it is in the worst case, better than a Solar Collector. For cost. Yeah, this force right now actually it could... I don't know. Going up, not a great idea. Going around might be a good idea. Or actually, tactically, one thing I would do in this situation... Actually, how much knowledge does... Yeah, they got full knowledge. Because the Weaver's right there. So friends have enough knowledge, they know that they could go around the side and back here. And at the same time, bum crumbs, they are aware enough of their armies, their opponent's positioning that they'd be able to deal with that. But the tactical advantage of the hill is very is very based on this line. So coming in along this way into here, that would be able to bypass that completely. That counter that. But I think Frenzy Mill is just playing it safe. And I don't blame them. I mean, they're you know, getting a frontline firebase. Probably setting up some defenses there. Getting some reclaim going if they can, but. I don't know, this character that was up that would help with reclaim. It'd be kind of nice. But at the very least, helps with repair. Keeping the units alive. Always good. The only downside, again, is there's no caretakers in the main base. Which would be really helpful right about now. Because Frenzy Mode has been accessing like mad. And why is this so far down? Frenzy Mode has been accessing like mad. That's really not ideal. Like, you want it... I mean, thankfully for them, they're not too far behind. But still, that it's not great... And army value is a, it's better in Frenzy Mode's case. So at the very least they have that. And they've also managed to pull their opponents away from that mountainside. So now the boys have no real advantage. Right, they're losing on the range fight. They're losing on the sheer numbers fight. The slow beam is nice. Or the slow shot is nice. And they have the mountain to retreat to. But again, if if Frenzy Mode could would go around the side and then push in, that mountain would be useless. However, they are going to have to deal with Grizzlies pretty soon, but even then, Frenzy Mode still has the economic advantage, so they're in a really good spot right now. It's just a matter of turning that into production, which, that's the key thing. Like, I like the caretakers in the front line. They're useful for repair, they're useful for... Actually, not a huge fan of the caretakers in the front line, but they're okay. They're good for repair. They're okay for reclaim, but they are a bit slow to build up, and all those caretakers in the main base would mean that there'd be about twice as many forces now in the front. Okay, I'm exaggerating slightly, but not that much, actually. No, I'm not exaggerating. It's a thousand metal. Well, it'll be another... Yeah, no, about about twice as many forces in the front line. When you take into account all the excess that's been used so far. The Frenzy Mode's kind of gotten lucky that Bum Crumbs has also been accessing. But, man, three or four more caretakers in the back... In the backyard for Frenzy Mode would be perfect. Or just build a proxy factory. I guess that would work too if they did that. But and the proxy gunship plant's not a bad spot, but it's also away from caretakers. 
And more importantly, you can't really build a caretaker that covers both of them. Which is a bit of a shame, because, well, that would be nice. I mean, really, it would be, it'd be amazing if you had the caretaker that covers both. That's what you want, in general. It's cheaper to build the caretakers. It's a very basic thing. But yeah, that's the one thing. It's like... Yeah. Oh yeah, no, caretakers in the back... Like, fr magical mode. Caretakers in the back is the typical way you increase production. Like, almost, almost always. Sometimes you use workers, but caretakers are more cost-efficient than workers. They can't move. The advantage to workers is that workers can do a lot of different things. But workers are always more expensive for build power. Like, the best workers... Like, the Weaver, I think, is actually the most efficient worker that isn't... Yeah, 200 for 7.5. Yeah, that is the most efficient worker out there. Caretakers are 220 for 10. Like, 220 metal for 10 build power. Weavers are two, 200 metal for 7.5 build power. I think they're the most efficient, or pretty close to. Most workers only have 5 build power, but they cost about 150 metal each. So, caretakers are still more efficient than that. But yeah, weavers are pretty clo pretty high up there for efficiency, but it's like, no. Go for caretakers. They're not mobile, but they do so much work when it comes to building up. And they're just that much... They're It's 22 metal per build power point. So, super efficient, non-mobile, but cheap, easy to build up. Definitely more efficient than additional factories, though you're not going for that, thankfully. You are going for workers, which is still good. It's still a good choice. It's just not as efficient. And frontline caretakers are fine. I mean, frontline caretakers are actually pretty good, too. Having a firebase like this, especially on a map this big, I agree with that. It's a little bit difficult to maintain space control in 0k using static defenses, but it's not a bad idea. It's just more that, in this case, there's a lot of room to maneuver around the static defenses, which isn't being taken advantage of. But it is there. Just for future reference, if you're playing it, someone who's much better at the game, then they will take advantage of that. Either by setting up air forces or, I mean, spider. Or just generally walking around the map. You got fleas everywhere, sure, but your main investment is in this one section in the center. Gives some room to maneuver, but the units are kind of slow, so it's difficult to respond quickly, even with the radar coverage. So that's just a thing to bear in mind. Whereas in the back line, you get more units, you can control more of the map and be more aggressive. But anyway, still though, I mean, if they wanted, to, if Frenzy Mode wanted to build a proxy factory right here, they'd have plenty of build power to do it with. Like, I don't know, build a proxy tank factory or something. Just set up a bunch of minotaurs right off the bat, and it's like 20 seconds per minotaur. You could totally do that. I don't think that'd be the best option. I think minotaurs would be a bad idea right now. I think if you were to go for a tank factory, that either a tremor or a pillager would be a better option. But, eh, minotaurs wouldn't be bad either. It's just there's plenty of frontline force. You could use more long-range damage. Something to bust through the defenses. Other than, you know, attacking from the sides. Or bypassing them entirely. I mean, I see the the value in not bypassing entirely, because then the frontline force could bypass your defenses. Which is exactly what Bumcrums is doing, actually. They are going exactly around that entire defensive line, the entire firebase I was talking about earlier, and completely ignoring it. And that seems to be Frenzy Mode responding in kind, so, hey. Both players thinking the same thing. Also, also, also! No point moves! Line moves! Line moves allow you to position your forces in such a way that you allow them to avoid splash damage. I mentioned that earlier. But line move is super important. If you use line move, then you don't have to worry about splash damage, you don't have to worry about units getting in each other's way for shooting, and you very quickly get your units in whatever position you need them to be in order to best surround the opponent. There's a lot you can do with line move. Like, seriously, please, use line move! It's like the first thing you learn in the tutorial. It's super important. We saw the last game, it really bit, the, it bit people in the ass, but yeah, it's... It is huge! Use that line move! Like, the best feature the game has. Which doesn't sound like it's saying much, but when you consider how much work people put into positioning forces in, say, StarCraft, especially in Brood Ward, like, the sort of thing you had to do for surrounds and for setting up ramp defenses and such. Yeah, having line move is huge. But anyway, errors, case in point, though, I was mentioning about avoiding defenses entirely frenzy mode, with the Revenant coming around the back, able to get rid of most everything, in, as well as the Locust in the south, so Bump Crumb's losing basically everything to, again, bypassing that firebase. Which, actually, I think this will be game. I mean, unless something comes in to totally stop this, but this looks pretty convincingly game. I mean, Bump Crumb's has basically no economy after this assault. 
They have this frontline force with quite a few Grizzlies. Yeah, they have two Striders worth of Grizzlies. So, not nothing. But still, this is pretty devastating, considering that at the same time Frenzy Mode is most of the map, they've managed to get enough of an economy going and enough production help going that they aren't excessing metal anymore. And they have twice the economy. And the Amp Factory is basically dead. And by basically, I mean it is dead. Next Revenant shot will kill it. So Bum Crumbs will have no production right now. I think Bum Crumbs are just going to go for that with this one last ditch base trade attempt. Maybe get it. Actually, nothing's willing to stop them either. Forces for Frenzy Mode trying to go north and bypass Bum Crumbs' defenses. That does open things up. How does Frenzy Mode not know this? Well, they totally know this. Why are they letting this happen? Okay, there we go. There's, that's what I expect. Going back, trying to defend against this. That, at the very least, allows the air forces to get in. That should be enough. Especially with the backyard base being torn to pieces. Yeah, this... This is Frenzy Mode's game. Definitely got this. Again, for tips they wanted, I would recommend build backyard caretakers. The use of workers is good. I'm glad that they're still done. But backyard caretakers are a much easier way of having that set up and allows you to use your workers for other things. You're not thinking, oh, I moved my workers and built up some stuff, and now you lose production capacity. So you just, that production capacity is just there. It's fine. The other thing I would recommend is to make sure if you have defenses get set up with Raider everywhere, you really got to make sure you watch where your opponents are setting up. And don't attack head on to his defensive, like, side lines, basic tactics. Side and attack. Like, it doesn't work against mobile units very well because mobile units can usually rearrange themselves to avoid being hit from the sides. But static defenses, especially on a hill like this, just go from the side. Far fewer of them can hit you at once. Actually, this... I'm not sure how this game is going to go anymore. With the Grizzlies coming in the back, the Spider Factory is done. The Gungeon Factory is already done. There's the Cloaky Factory for Bumcrum being built up here, and that's about it. And most of Frenzy Mode's forces are being torn apart by the defenses. I mean, they managed to punch through that. But still, a lot of were lost in the process. And if Bump Crumbs' commando goes down, they might still throw in the towel. But on the other hand, they've got all these forces in the backyard. I think Bump Crumbs actually has an army value advantage. Yes, they have twice the army value, mostly because of all those grizzlies doing their job here. And hey, there's the proxy tank founder I was talking about earlier. Unfortunately, out of range of the caretakers. So close. So, like, seriously, move it back. It was right here. It's like, right, right, right there. It would have been perfect, but no. No, it, 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 here. I guess, move it around. It's like, right here. Would have been great. But no, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess it's hard to see the green circles on the green terrain, but... Yeah, those green circles are good. Those green circles are life. They keep your stuff going. Because, yeah, the factory would have been done by now. Would have started building units. If the caretaker was next to it. I'm just, I just feel so silly. Like, it's so close to this massive amount of caretakers that would have been perfect for helping build it up. And it's just one factory length away from the caretaker's production assistance radius. So close. Still, though, I think Frenzy Mode probably has this. I mean, the Revenants alone are... I oh, don't know, the Revenants don't really deal with the Grizzlies well. That's the problem. These, this force of Grizzlies coming around the back, that's still a major problem. Like, sure, Bum Crumbs' main base and commander is heavily threatened, but so what? This isn't a game of commander destruction. The game ends when you destroy your entire opponent's base and everything, and I don't see Frenzy Mode really losing out on that. They can rebuild, yes. They can get themselves set up. They have the tank factory up and everything. So they can get themselves going again, which Bum Crumbs can't really. Bum Whatever Bum Crumbs loses, they've lost forever. They don't really have a way of getting back in this game. They're trying, for sure, but it's... So difficult for them to get back in here. If Bum Crumbs is their commander, they're done. The commander is the last thing just because they can't rebuild if they lose that. They have these forces that can walk around the map and do some damage, but that's not really enough considering that there's, you know, Cyclops is coming in here. Those will take care of the Grizzlies. And yeah, Bum Crumbs' commander. Oof. The Bum Crumbs' commander's main defense, the Grizzly, that's going to be a problem. And the commander itself, I mean, there's so many Rexes coming in here that, yeah, the commander is dead. Or recluses. So many recluses coming in here. People were complaining about them in the comments earlier. Recluses, not recluses. So many rec no, it's recluse. Yeah, brown recluse. So many recluses coming in here. That is Bum Crumbs' commander gone. Basically no production available for them now, and it's down to this. 
these Grizzlies are it, and I kind of don't see that working out. There's, I don't know, there's a timing right now. If the Grizzlies come in right now and they don't get properly defended against, then Frenzy Mode could lose this. But at this point, yeah, that's kind of it. That's actually literally it. This is it. This is all Bum Crumbs has. These forces right here are the only things that Bum Crumbs is staying in the game because 0k is actually about killing all your opponent's units and buildings, not just buildings. So this is the only reason Bum Crumbs is actually still in this game is because killing buildings is not good enough. But even then, Frenzy Mode still has 16 metal per second they can play with. They've they lost the caretakers and they're going to lose the factory. But their commander's still around. They can still build up. They still have units on the map. They can still get a factory somewhere else if they wanted to. In multiple places if they wanted to. I mean, they got plenty of time. But, yeah, this grizzly force is just going around the map. It's just not going to be easy to deal with. Speed it up a little bit, though. It doesn't take a while. It is a slow-moving force. Oh, but hey, get the airplane factory. Ooh, no, no, the ravens in the airplane factory. That'll be it. That'll do it. The Grizzlies don't have much HP, so... Yeah, they if the Ravens can get in and start just destroying the Grizzlies one by one... Then I can see that working. I can see that possibly taking this out completely, because, yeah, there's enough Ravens here. Now this is it. Frenzy Mode, I like their thinking. That is totally going to win the game. I mean, it's a silly win. In fact, that comes down to that, like... That should go up to ten times because of how... Like, seriously, this is... Okay, it's starting to get bit inefficient. Keep it smooth. Keep it smooth. But still. Okay, now there's the attack. There it is! The Grizzly's actually taking the damage. There we go. The Ravens. The Ravens. The one thing that was there that Frenzyman was able to build off in the corner of the map, giving them the game. Just barely. But no, it's, it is buildings and units you need to kill in order to win this game. Which is mildly annoying. No, more, normally people just GG. Like, the only reason why Bum Crumbs didn't throw in the towel is because they had all these Grizzlies and they could wipe out Frenzy Mode's entire production. In theory, the Grizzlies could have possibly gone around and destroyed stuff, but the map is kind of too big for that. The Grizzlies are too slow, the map is too big. There's no real way the Grizzlies could have done that. But hey, that was still a thing. So yeah, that is... That's that. I... Let's see... Yeah, I think I'm going to just call it for now. So, thanks for watching. That was, I mean, cast for a while. I don't expect I'm going to be doing Saturday streams for the next couple weeks. After that, though, I should be able to, I think. Like, all going well, I'll have done the... I'll have, well, actually, no. 25th, no promises. 11th and 18th, I can't. Like, in the next two weeks, I can't do it on Saturday. I might do it on other days, but Saturday's not an option. With following that, I'm not sure. No promises. Maybe I will. Like I said in the announcement, September, I should be good. Like, I should have everything sorted out for hopefully for moving and for internet and everything else. Should all be sorted out. So yeah, that'll be that. So anyway, thanks again for watching, everyone, and have a good night.